Four months ago, I lost more than half my business, lost more than $25,000 of revenue, and thought that all of this might be ending. But on September 10th, 2022, that all changed. About a month ago, I put out a video called, I lost more than half my business. I'm not gonna rehash that whole video, but if you wanna check it out, I'll link it up here and down in the description below. Anyway, in that video, I discuss how Instagram incorrectly deleted my account for human exploitation, and I literally lost more than half of my business. That platform drives the majority of traffic to my website, drives the majority of my custom sales and commissions, and the majority of my sponsored content. And one morning, it all just vanished instantly and there was nothing I could do to get it back. Or was there? I wanna step back and kind of retrace the steps that I took attempting to get my Instagram account back and answer a lot of the questions that people wanted to know surrounding the whole event that happened on my previous video. And I guess before we get into things, you should know that Facebook, Instagram, Meta are all effectively one entity and they're all connected and support one another. So those names might be interchangeable throughout this video. Just wanted to make sure we're on the same page. All right, first thing, the instant that my account got deleted, this message popped up on Instagram. We've suspended your account on June 3rd, 2022. Your account or activity on it doesn't follow our community guidelines on human exploitation. If you think that we made a mistake, you have 30 days after we suspend your account to disagree with the decision or your account will be permanently disabled. There are 30 days remaining. Well, obviously <laughs> I had not done anything even close to being considered human exploitation. I just post woodworking videos. So I hit this disagree with decision button. Within about 20 to 30 seconds, I got a message back saying that the decision was final and that my account was permanently disabled. It was very, very clear that there was not an actual human looking at my account, or rather some just sort of automated algorithm. Second, since that took me absolutely nowhere, I started doing a boatload of online research reading news articles, forums, Reddit posts, and tons of other mediums, trying to find what the hell I should do to attempt to contact someone to actually get some help. During that research, I came across these kind of hidden, back-end, secret customer support pages that Instagram offers to help you out during times like this. Well, at least that's what they say they're for, but in my experience, it shows otherwise. The first one looks like this, and I'll leave a link in the description if you ever need to get to this page. It's not very easy to find. This form is supposedly a way to get someone to investigate your account if it was disabled by mistake, like mine was. I filled out that form at the beginning of June and still have not gotten a response in over four months. So I tried another one of those secret back-end form things. This form, again, is supposed to get someone to look at your account if it was disabled by mistake. I'm not sure how this one is any different from the previous one, but it's a totally new URL, so I figured I'd give it a shot. Now this one, I actually did hear back from Instagram fairly quickly with this email. Thanks for contacting us. Before we can help, we need you to confirm that you own this account. Should be pretty easy. Please reply to this message and send us a proof of yourself holding a handwritten copy of the code below. So I sent off the photo as requested and still haven't gotten a response in over four months. Third, I did some more research and found that there are some unpublished email addresses that people have, I guess, had success with getting in contact with Meta employees. So I tried emailing them directly at a boatload of different email addresses support at instagram.com, disabled at facebook.com, appeals at facebook.com, abuse at facebook.com, and have yet to receive a single response from any of them in over four months. As I'm sure you can imagine, this is starting to get super, super, super frustrating that I literally couldn't reach 
anyone to try to help me. Fourth, I sent out an email to all of my email subscribers asking if any of them were able to help me with this issue. That email list is where I send out tons of coupons, behind the scenes updates, and important announcements. And if you wanna sign up for that, there's a link down below in the description, but let's just keep going. The goal was to see if any of my mailing lists knew an employee or maybe had some tips or tricks for me. From the email, a few people reached out offering some suggestions. One was to email Mark Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg at Facebook.com, and Adam Mazzari, Mazzari at Instagram.com directly. If you don't know these names, they're basically the head of Facebook and Instagram. And what I was told was that if you email them, supposedly their assistants would actually read my email and help me out. Well, unfortunately, I tried that and still have not gotten a response in over four months. One of the other suggestions that I got back was to check out a paid service and disclosure, this is not sponsored or endorsed by me whatsoever. It's a website called hacked.com. I got in contact with them and they actually did respond very quickly, but they said that this was an issue that they were unable to help with. However, they've been flooded with requests like mine and apparently it's a really common issue, but they don't have any suggestions on how to proceed to get the issue solved. Another suggestion from an email subscriber was that I hunt down some people on LinkedIn that actually work at Facebook, Instagram, Meta, and try to contact them through that platform. Unfortunately, not a single one of those people responded. And what sucks even more is you have to pay for the LinkedIn premium service thing to be able to message people that you don't have a contact with. Fifth, my good friend and podcast co-host, Zach from Zach Builds, suggested that I try reaching out to Facebook through their ad support service. Only issue is that the only way that you can access this is that you have to pay money to run ads. Yes, the only way you will ever be able to actually talk to a customer service representative at Meta is to pay money. So anyway, I did this live chat thing many, many, many times, and all I ever got back was very blanketed statements about how they were so super busy and my account was extremely valuable to them, but they can't offer any suggestions other than to just wait. It was at this point that I pretty much gave up and just accepted the fact that that huge revenue stream for my business was completely gone. In trying to turn a negative event into something positive, I made that video, I lost more than half my business, about 45 weeks ago. The goal of that video was to be super vulnerable about how diversification literally saved me from going under. If 100% of my business were reliant on one thing, Instagram, this entire dream of quitting my day job and taking this full time would have instantly been gone. I really didn't think anything would happen from that video. I really just wanted to get the message out about why my account got deleted and just, I guess, to document what happened and why I'm not on Instagram anymore. But then something completely unexpected happened. After posting that video to YouTube, it literally exploded for my channel, hitting over 200,000 views and about 2,500 comments in about a week, which for me and my channel is insane. I honestly was blown away by all the encouraging words, support, and overall positivity that you and everyone else in the community sent my way during that super difficult time in my business. I honestly can't thank you enough for the support and it truly meant a lot to me. In that comment section, I got a boatload of suggestions, tips, and contacts of people who I should reach out to. I tried each and every one of those tips and unfortunately, not a single one worked. But then I got an email from someone who has requested to remain anonymous. Let's call this person Todd. Todd reached out to me after watching the video and this is what he said. I saw your video about your account on Instagram being deleted. I may be able to help with this. I actually work for Facebook and can get our internal group to help figure out what happened to your account. Now, of course, when I first got that email, I was both really excited and highly, highly skeptical. 
My spam fraud meter was at an all-time high, and I investigated the email address a lot before coming to the conclusion that this Todd figure was in fact a real Facebook employee. Now, I did get pretty excited, but I still wanted to keep my expectations pretty low. Well, after a few back and forth emails with Todd and waiting a few weeks, I started getting messages from people that my Instagram account was back up. I tried logging in, but got this weird error that wouldn't allow me to access the account. But I figured that this was definitely a step in the right direction because my account was actually visible by other people on the platform. After I got those messages, I tried logging into my account every single day and kept running into the exact same error where I just couldn't log in. Then, on the morning of September 10th, 2022, I attempted to log in as I had every morning for the past week or so, and it worked. I got back in. My account was completely reinstated with everything saved, just like I had never left. This was absolutely huge. Just like that, a huge switch was turned back on and a massive part of my business was reactivated. And I know the question that everyone wants to know, Eric, why was your account deleted in the first place? What was the human exploitation thing that you did? I'll get to that, but first I want to answer all of the very common questions and comments that were asked on my last video. The most common question that I got was, why didn't I sue Instagram? Now, I am not a lawyer and I've also never read the 500 page long terms of service agreement that you're supposed to read when you sign up for any service, and I'm sure you haven't either. But just using simple logic and reasoning leads me to believe that if I'm using their service, which they own, they're free to do whatever the heck they want with my account. If they want to delete me just because, I'm sure they're free to do it. Could I have hired a lawyer? Yes. But honestly, I didn't think it was worth the time or money, especially if my account was actually deleted and there was nothing that could be done even if I did win the lawsuit. If the data of my account was gone, there would really be no benefit to getting the account back. And the second most common question I got was, why did I care about losing Instagram? Social media is evil. This was a funny one for me. For all the people that hate social media, but left a comment on a YouTube video, you do realize that YouTube is social media, right? <laughs> Social media is a great way to grow an audience for something that you're working on. When you provide those people value who are watching, they start to follow and interact with you. Then you can make money by providing those people value through courses, plans, merchandise, coaching, and promotional opportunities with brands. I totally agree. I hate social media that pits people against one another and causes conflict. But in the woodworking space, all of the media out there is about teaching one another how to get better at a craft. I don't think anything about that is negative, except for the owner of Odie's Oil. That guy is a real piece of work, but that's a story for another day. Just know that that's why you will never see me using Odie's Oil. And the third most common question that I got asked is, why don't you just build an email list so that I can stay in contact with people who want to see my content instead of putting it out on platforms like Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube? Well, short answer is I do have an email list and I send out monthly updates about what I'm working on, discount codes to products, and useful tips and tricks for people to use in their own shop. If you want to sign up for the list, there is a link down in the description below. All of the social media platforms are simply another avenue to get my content out to teach more people. There were some other popular questions and comments, but most of them were just political rants for or against different parties, which is funny to me that woodworking stirs up those thoughts and aggression and anger, but those are the three main ones that I wanted to touch on. But I know the last question that everyone is going to want to know is, since my account got deleted for human exploitation, what exactly did I do or post that caused my account to get flagged? Well, here's the really, really crappy thing. Remember that Facebook employee that I referred to as Todd? 
Todd told me this. From what they are saying, it showed up somehow with violating our underage checks. Combine this with some of the AI with videos it was showing up in a lot of our trafficking violation buckets. That's what it seems like, no official confirmation. So Todd asked me to confirm my birthday to get a correct age reinstated on my account. Then after providing my birthday, I heard back from Todd again. He said, basically, you failed our underage check. There may have been something that popped up or was emailed that was somehow missed. But basically, due to that, the account was closed down. Here's a bit more info on it. It is a product and legal requirement as you can read here and here. So basically to sum up the entire event in one sentence, Instagram forgot what my birthday was. And that's why my account was permanently deleted. Now, when I had signed up for the account, I entered my actual birthday, which I'm 30, not under 13. And Instagram just kind of forgot what my birthday was. Instead of prompting me to re-enter my birthday, they just said, nah, let's just delete his count. Literally all of that four month long nightmare I went through was due to a software bug. As I had already known, nothing that I posted was at all anywhere near human exploitation. A simple bug in the software was what instantly wiped out more than half my business. I wanted to make this video to share my story about how big of a nightmare all of these social media platforms are to deal with. Yes, social media is a super powerful tool and a fantastic way to build and foster a great community. The problem is, as soon as you run into one teeny issue, you are literally screwed when it comes to getting any kind of resolution. I know my accounts are nowhere near being massive, but there should be some sort of tiered system where once your account reaches a certain size, a certain level maybe, there's some sort of representative that you can have contact with if you need help. I mean, creators on social media platforms are what drive the majority of traffic. Without creators, Meta, Facebook, Instagram, wouldn't be able to run all those ads and make all of their money. During the last few months, I had somewhere near maybe 50 to 75 people reach out to me saying that they had their account deleted for the exact same reason. Some of them are still working on getting it back without receiving any response from the platform in almost two years. If you ever come across a big issue with one of these companies, there is literally nothing that you can do unless you have a contact who works inside the company. Now, I know that there are gonna be tons of people that are going to reach out asking me for Todd's contact information, but he has requested that I keep all of his information private. I really, really hope you're able to respect his wish. But now that everyone understands what happened, and with all that being said, one of the other big questions that a lot of people ask is what I'm going to do with the sponsors that immediately dropped me when I reached out and told them that my Instagram account got deleted. <laughs> well, you wouldn't believe this, but of the 13 sponsors that instantly dropped me when my account got deleted, 12 of them magically decided that they wanted to work with me about a day or two after my account was reactivated. Because I have integrity and it was unbelievably obvious that these companies were not out to support me or support the community, I gave them a kind and respectful one finger salute. And yes, I know everyone wants to know who these companies are, I really don't think it's appropriate or provides any positive value for me to publicly blast them. Just take a good look at my previous videos and sponsors and then compare them to videos I have coming up in the future. It will be pretty obvious which brands and colors are no longer being shown. With all that being said, I truly want to thank each and every one of you who have ever supported me on this journey to taking my passion in life woodworking and building, and trying to turn it into something that will be able to replace my day job income. From watching a video, leaving a comment, 
subscribing to the channel, or purchasing merchandise or plans from my online store, every interaction truly makes a difference in helping all of this grow. Now that all of this back-end business social media stuff is talked about and out of the way, what's coming next on the channel? I am honestly pumped for all the new content I've got coming up and I cannot wait to share it with you. So if you want to know some behind the scenes stuff that 90 plus percent of viewers won't see because they don't watch more than about the first 60 seconds of a video, here's your reward for making it this far. First, I am working on buttoning up a video on my exact pricing strategy for selling your very own custom products from cutting boards, dining tables, custom signs, coffee tables, and cornhole boards, I'm gonna share with you the exact formula to accurately price your products and actually make a profit. And that is not minimum wage. Alongside that video, I'm going to provide a spreadsheet that does all of the complicated math for you so you don't have to worry about making any calculation errors. And no, the formula is not material cost times two. That is a horrible pricing strategy. Second, I've got a huge dining table that I'm gonna be releasing soon. That project is by far my largest and most challenging project I've ever worked on. And I'm diving deep into that video and trying something a little bit different, but you'll have to wait and see what I mean by that. And just like all of my other project builds, that dining table is going to have step-by-step -step instructions and plans so that you can follow along and build it for yourself. And third, people seem to absolutely love shop projects. And I am the first one to admit when I've made a mistake. There is one shop project in here that I absolutely hate and made a big error on. And I'm working on a video on that fix. After using that specific shop project for about half a year, I realized that it really was not the best design and I needed to make a drastic change to it. And fourth, outdoor projects are something that I've never really done because I've never gotten a commission to build one. And because I live in an apartment, I don't have any place to put this stuff. Well, a viewer reached out asking for a large outdoor project and I decided to take the commission and this is gonna be a fun one. And the cool thing about that project is that I'm going out of my way to make it super, super accessible by only using a few basic tools. No domino, no track saw, or anything expensive are gonna be required to build it. I have a feeling I'm going to regret that decision. <laughs> but I wanna make it more accessible for everybody that's watching. Anyway, I've got about nine other videos that are really far along and should be coming up very shortly, not to mention the massive list of project and video ideas that I have coming up for the future. There is truly no end in sight with all the ideas that I've got to share with all of you. I also realized that I need to do a shop tour video talking about everything that I've changed over the past year. Sure, I'm in the same space, but a lot has changed up and I've changed a ton of different tools. All of that and more is coming up very, very soon. You may not know, but I read every single comment that comes in. So if you leave a comment below that starts with, uh, let's go with cheese. That is a small way to show your support and lets me know that you actually watched the video. So if you have any questions or just want to show your support and help me grow this channel, consider writing cheese below in the comment section and I promise I will get back to you. Also, if you use the code cheese on my website as a special thank you for your support, you will get 25% off all digital products. Use it as many times as you want. It's never going to expire. I honestly cannot thank you enough for all the support that you've shown me over the last three years. I've gone from working out in the parking lot of my apartment, filming all these projects, not making a dime, actually losing hundreds of dollars every week, to having a roof over my shop and consistently bringing in a decent sum of money every single month. Creating free content for you to enjoy is a lot of hard work. Not only do I have to build all the projects, I have to buy all the supplies, I have to film everything, 
have to edit all the videos, have to do all the back-end work that you will never see, have to negotiate with sponsors, talk with clients, and do all of that while trying to manage my day job and maintain quality relationships with my friends and family. The reason that I started this is not for the money. I do this because I truly love doing it. I have a blast creating these videos. Well, more so the ones where I'm not talking about how I got screwed by Instagram, but the ones where I'm talking about woodworking and building stuff. But I think you get what I mean. My ask is that if there is any content creator that you enjoy watching, maybe someone who has as small as 21 subscribers or as large as 21 million subscribers, at any level, consider offering them some of your support. Leave an encouraging comment on your favorite creator's video. Send them an email about how you enjoy what they're doing and creating. Or if you're able to, consider supporting them financially by maybe buying a t-shirt or donating to some charitable organization that they work with. Now, I am not telling you to do that to me. In fact, I'm really asking you not to. I want to spread the kindness that Todd spread to me. He went out of his way to help me, and I'm asking you to take a second of your time to go find a creator that you really like and just send them some kindness. Maybe it's a gaming channel or a fashion channel or a movie review channel or some of my friends like Zach from Zach Builds, Scott Walsh, John from Lincoln Street Woodworks, or Chris from Cowdog Craftworks. Just surprise them with a little bit of kindness. It'll feel really good and I know for anyone who receives that, it will truly, truly make their day. All right, I'm out of here. I've got a lot of woodworking to do so I can make some more videos for you. I'll see you on the next one. Well, this is usually the part of the video where I ask you to check out some of these links here, but I feel like I kind of already did that, so I'll just hang out for a bit. Or check out these videos. I think you might enjoy them. Oh crap, I'm late to record my podcast. I'll see you around.